Dan Omen, Mike Beer, taking a look at race number 11 at Churchill Downs on Kentucky Derby Saturday. It's the grade one, one million dollar turf classic. We're going a mile and an eighth on the lawn, and there are some rock solid turf forces in this field. Let's take a peek at this group. I think you can make a case for five or six of these horses. Chad Brown has two in very good form. Program trading exploded to win the Saratoga Derby and Hollywood Derby as a three-year-old. Now he's coming off the layoff. I'm very busy. has been a revelation in his last few starts, including a blowout win in the Muniz Memorial at the fairgrounds. Yeah, I, listen, we'll see if program trading can improve as much as a four-year-old as his stablemate has, because I'm very busy, has really jumped up in his first two starts this year. That being said, isn't the horse to beat the horse that's drawn to the outside here, the 11 naval power? Took the words right out of my mouth. He showed up last time out at Keeneland in the grade one maker's mark, and he ran quite well to be second behind a really good horse, his stablemate, Breeders' Cup mile winner, Master of the Seas. We'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this nine furlong turf event, and I'm not surprised that Never Surprised is expected to make the lead. That's his best game, and I think Todd Pletcher's done a very good job with this horse. He's always had talent, Mike. He's just been plagued by various injuries that have kept him on the bench. Yeah, true enough. I mean, we'll see if he's going to ultimately be able to get back to the potential that it seemed like that he once did have, Dan. Getting an early, easy lead in this race, I guess, could go a long way. Feels like he's going to have to really up his game, though, as some of these other horses show up at their best race. I don't think there's a ton of other speed in this race, yeah. and that could help never surprise. The good news for a horse like Program Trading is, A, he's fresh, so he's likely going to be pulling a little bit coming out of the gate, and B, he has shown the tactical speed to be close. I think it's imperative for both Program Trading and Chellis to be close to the lead. I agree with that. I think the Program Trading could get the right trip. Chellis is a really interesting horse for that reason mostly, Dan. It feels like there's a good trip coming for this horse. If it's not right on the lead, it's right up close. Integration showed a ton of talent for Suge McGahee winning his first three starts and then in the Pegasus World Cup turf. I just don't think that trip worked out. It looked like he was going to start running in mid-stretch and he got it kind of caught up in and among horses in a tight spot. And when he finally got full clearance, he was running on at the end. And last time out in the Maker's Mark, that was a very yielding turf course and he was wide every step. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he, he certainly had a big excuse. Two starts back, it felt like. Last time, maybe not as much, but man, you're talking about really soft turf course. Um, you're talking about him cutting back to a mile from a bunch of nine furlong races, and then you're talking about him sitting on the outside while Master of the Seas Naval Power, they both got inside runs into the stretch there. This horse was hung out to dry. Wasn't a great performance, but might not be as bad as it looks. His form as a three-year-old outstanding program trading turned out to be a really nice horse this horse buried him in the virginia derby he was our program trade was already a grade one winner at that time they come back in the hillprints and i realize that i'm very very busy he's way better now than he was then he buried that horse in that race Anglophile is the number two. He's coming into this race in good form of this effort, a third place effort in the McDermott. But the McDermott is at 11 furlongs. And looking over Anglophile's form, Mike, you have to wonder if he's a little bit more effective in these longer distance races. It feels that way about him. I mean, I don't know. I, don't, I guess I don't mind him cutting back in distance here. And I think the real question for Anglophile is, is he good enough? to beat horses like this. I mean, he's his first, his last three starts, they're all pretty good. They have him moving in the right direction. He's got to do better than that against this field. The number three is Cellist, and he's a horse that's run well on turf in the past, winning the Louisville at Churchill Downs back in 2022. And occasionally outrunning his odds on the grass, even though he's only raced three times on synthetic, though, an argument can be made that he prefers the all-weather at Turfway Park because his last race, the Grade 3 Kentucky Cup Classic, not only was his fastest race from a buyer speed figure standpoint, he looked really good doing it, carrying ground every step of the way and dominating them. His two starts over that surface recently are both really good performances, but he's a good turf horse, too, so I'm not going to pigeonhole him and just say he's better on the other surface. Maybe he is, but he's a good turf horse, Dan. It's all about if he can get the right trip in there, and I think that he can. And then is he quite good enough? I'm not I'm not totally convinced that he's necessarily good enough to beat this or that they all show up. I still haven't quite forgiven him for not holding on in the Sycamore last year. Um, I thought that was race was his to win. He was home free, and he couldn't hold it. Yeah, that's sort of the problem. It's not like he only has to face one good one here.
He has to face three or four and beat them all. So Tripp's going to be key. Luis Saez retains the mount. I think he'll be aggressive with Chellis and have him first or second going into the back stretch. Uh, he did beat a pretty weak field in the Kentucky Cup Classic. I think Farbridge still has a tremendous amount of upside potential, Mike. He made his first start back in the Christophe Clement barn in a race that looked like a prep. They cut him back to a mile and a 16th at Gulfstream. And here's Farbridge. He was supposed to win at odds on, and he did so. And this pace was not very fast, and he was able to overcome and just show off his class. Yeah, I like this performance, too. It feels like a perfect prep for this horse. He's now three for three for Clement. And, oh, by the way, when he left Clement's barn last summer, he only won a grade one race for Todd Pletcher. He's a really good horse, Dan. I think he could get the right trip in this race. Does he have to improve to beat this field? He does, but he might have it in it. But I like his tactical ability, and as a second-time starting four-year-old, he should have plenty of upside. He can run a mile and a sixteenth. He can run a mile and a quarter. There are a lot of things to like, especially that eight-to-one on the morning line for these connections. Program trading is up next, and he was beaten by Integration as the odds-on favorite in the Virginia Derby, and he then just came back and validated Integration's performance by winning the Hollywood Derby. This was a race that had a very strong pace, Mike, and Program Trading is going to kick down Web Slinger, who I thought was again unlucky. Yeah, he was. Web Slinger, that's the story of his life. Program trading wasn't unlucky at all in here. He just runs a really good race um, and, and winds up holding on at the end here. This is a good performance, Dan. Two starts back, he ran fine, but he was no match for integration. And when he won the grade one at, at Saratoga, yielding turf, they just sort of handed him the lead in there. Um, I, I still feel like I'm not sure how good he is. If he can improve, though, again, as much as his stablemates improved, if he can do that as a four-year-old, We'll be tough in here. He did beat three next out winners in the Hollywood Derby. The third place finisher, Silver Knot, won the Elkhorn recently at Keeneland with a 99 buyer speed figure. I'm very busy, was an okay three year old, even better than okay. He ran a fine second in the Hill Prince, I thought. He had to wait a little bit on the turn, had to angle to follow the odds on winner in the stretch, and there was just no match for integration the final eighth of a mile. Ever since that race, he's been kicking hard in the stretch. Pegasus World Cup running second behind Warm Heart, who had a perfect trip and is a superstar in her own right and then in the Muniz last time out got the right pace set up but really fired in the stretch yeah I mean, he looked really good winning that race uh last time that was a really impressive performance his Pegasus World Cup was good too um the difference there was kind of he got the seam in the stretch there that integration didn't get and so this horse sort of took advantage but he still ran really well and then just upped his game again last time I think it was a weaker field in this one but he still he looked so good winning. It's hard not to not to uh, be really afraid of him in this race. If he runs another one like that in here, it's going to be a handful. Web Slinger needs a trip and he needs some pace and he might not get a pace. And if you just look at his races, he rarely gets a trip. I still think on his best day, he's as good as some of the better horses in this race. I thought he ran just as well as program training in the Saratoga Derby. That horse controlled everything. This yeah. horse was three, four wide every step and was rallying at the end. I thought in the Twilight Derby, he ends up five wide on the far turn, six wide in the stretch, and he's rallying on for third. Hollywood Derby, we saw him get shuffled back and run on at the end. He was third in the Muniz last time out. He wasn't as good as I'm very busy, so he still, I guess, has to prove himself somewhat. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you're at the point now with Web Slinger as how many more excuses do you want to make for this horse? Because you can make valid ones, not so much for the last race. He just wasn't as good as I'm very busy in that race. But you, like, sort of noted all the excuses prior to that. Even the Pegasus World Cup turf, then, you can go back and watch the replay of that. This horse got in traffic and checked and totally lost all chance in that race and was still running at the end. I mean, he's got plenty of talent. He needs to get the right trip, though, to be effective. Never surprised was second to Colonel Liam, who at that point in time was the best turf horse in North America in early 2022 two when showing his good early speed unfortunately he has only raced four times since then but i think it's good that ton has him on a regular racing schedule now he was fifth in the appleton last time out going a mile but stretching out to a mile and an eighth i think florent Giroux is putting him on the lead and he might drop the anchor yeah he could get he could really have things his own way on the front in this race and that is just that's a reason to take a second look at him if i'm being honest dan even when he was in good form early on I was never a big fan of this horse, and I thought he was maybe a little bit overrated, but he ran a great race at the Pegasus World Cup turf a couple of years ago. He missed a lot of time. He's third off the layoff now. Maybe he just pulls the right trip in here and runs a really big race, but I'm not sold on this horse. 
Never Explain is up next. You liked this horse last time out in the Tampa Bay for his seasonal debut, and you were absolutely right at 4-1. to one. Let's watch that race. And it was a race where he was a little bit farther back than I thought he would be in the early part. The pace wasn't fast, but he made this really strong move on the second turn to get himself into contention. And then he grinds down a pretty nice horse. That English B came back to win an allowance at Keeneland with a 96 buyer. Yeah, he's much the best in here, never explain. This is a, a really good performance. He just got a lot better last year, did it? It all started, he was an impossible horse to ride early in his career, and he just wouldn't settle. He got better with that stuff last year, and then it showed in his most recent start that he's really comfortable now raiding early and making a run, and that's a huge advantage for this horse. He's in pretty tough in this race, but he's underrated. No, he's a typical shug horse who just gets better with a, uh, additional maturity. And as he gets older, he's learned how to become a racehorse. Siege of Boston is up next, the number 10. This guy's hit the board in his last six starts, including this effort, a runner-up performance in the Canadian turf at Gulfstream in early March. And we see Siege of Boston in between horses here, turning into the stretch. He's got a little bit of a look at this, Mike, and he's just going to get beat a half length under the line. The fifth place finisher from this race came back to run second in a grade three on the synthetic with a 96 expire he runs fine in here he's only second best to emmanuel who's a, a pretty nice horse uh one start before that he ran fine but he wasn't quite good enough to get to never explain prior to that he ran fine going nine furlongs at churchill he just wasn't quite good enough i mean i i like this horse the added distance is no problem for him i wonder if he's not just a little overmatched against horses like this and here's naval power the 11 from the another one from the armada of godolphin and charlie appleby here's his north american debut the maker's mark mile you're going to see the horse down on the inside in the godolphin blue master of the seas duck to the rail at just the right time naval power saved ground most of the way he tries to come through in between horses he runs on well for second he ran a big 104 buyer speed figure and from a class standpoint Boy, this horse fits, and maybe this mile distance was actually a little short for him. It could have been. I mean, he actually ran a good one there. He had a look at it mid-stretch. He can't go with Master of the Seas, who's maybe the best turf horse in North America right now. No but he was clearly second best. He did break poorly in that race last time, so he's going to have to clean that up. Um, but if he does, and he can get a trip from post-11 in here, I mean, I think there's a real argument to me that he just might be the best horse. There are no bad races on his card, save that grade one where he bled. Um, at the end of 2022. Otherwise, his races are rock solid. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Turf Classic at Churchill Downs. You're going with integration. I, I like that you're still keeping the faith. He looked so good last year. He had trouble in the Pegasus. I just think that yielding turf course really worked against him. He has such an explosive turn of foot. I think he had trouble getting his footing. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. I feel like he deserves one more chance here. This is not an easy race for him. There are a bunch of good horses drawn to his outside, but he got a perfect post. The nine furlongs is good for him. I think he deserves a chance to redeem himself, but he might be a fair price. I thought Naval Power was the horse to beat. Yeah, I want to use him. Uh, I want to use integration. As you said, Naval Power is the horse to beat. Chellis, to me, is kind of the price play that I think can work out a trip because he's very, very tactical. But he's really going to have to up his game switching back to turf because there are three, four, five good horses in here. But I should get at least 12 to 1 at post time on Chellis, who is coming into the race in good form. 111.69 for Mike. 3.11.16 for me. It's the Grade 1 Turf Classic at Churchill Downs on Derby Day. Good luck.